Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 13 of our ratio analysis video series. And in this installment, we learn all about days payable outstanding. In simple terms, days payable outstanding helps us measure the average time in days that a business takes to pay off its creditors. So it's a tutorial where we'll be discussing four things. Number one, understand what days payable outstanding means. Number two, what is formula and the calculations. Number three, we'll calculate days payable outstanding for Colgate. And number four, its interpretations. So before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder yet again, we'll be needing the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the description link below. And also to keep yourself updated with the investment banking and core finance concepts, Please do subscribe to our channel that is Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is Day's Payable Outstanding? Day's Payable Outstanding is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the turnover ratios. In our previous video, we learned how accounts payable turnover is calculated. And if you look at Day's Payable is very closely related to accounts payable turnover. Accounts payable turnover was nothing but it tells us how many times during a year you are actually paying your average accounts payable to your suppliers. And uh, if you look at days payable, days payable basically converts that thing into number of days. It says that in how many days on an average you are paying your suppliers. So is it 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, so on and so forth. Let us now look at the calculations of days payable. Days payable is uh, calculated by using a two step process. The first step is to calculate the accounts payable turnover. This calculation we learned in our previous video. So I urge you to go back and look at how the calculations are done. We'll do a quick refresher right now. But uh, if you want it in more detail, you can go back and refer to that video. And that's the first step. The second step is to divide the 365 by the accounts payable turnover. So let's look at these two steps uh, now for the calculation. So as a quick refresher, accounts payable turnover is calculated as purchases divided by average accounts payable. So average accounts payable is the start and the end of the year. So since it's a balance sheet item, we take the average of the two and the purchases as we also discussed last time, purchases is not available in the income statement. So we have to find it out and uh, we used the base equation base equation uh, to find out the purchases base equation was nothing but uh, the beginning inventory the inventory which you hold at the start of the year the addition to inventory b for beginning a is addition to inventory this addition to inventory is nothing but purchases so this is what we need to find out for calculation of accounts payable turnover so this equation is equal to cost of goods sold s sold so that's why b a s s is for sold and e is for ending inventory so this is the equation that holds true what you have at the start and what you buy during the year is equal to what you sell and what you're left so this is the base equation we applied and we found out that the addition to inventory formula is just rearranging this base equation and that is equal to cost of goods sold plus ending inventory minus the beginning inventory. Okay, so once we have this purchases, you should be able to find out the accounts payable turnover. It should be a fairly simple process. But for the sake of convenience, I'll repeat the same example that we did last time. In this, we have the cost of goods sold given beginning inventory, ending inventory and we have the start and the end of the accounts payable as well. So what's the purchases amount? Purchases amount as per this equation, cost of goods sold plus the ending inventory and minus the beginning inventory. Okay, so this is your purchases during the year. This is the amount of purchases that you've done. What is the average accounts payable? So 10,000 plus 20,000 divided by two. So it should be 15,000. So I'll use this average formula, 10 and 20 divided by two. So basically it comes as 15,000. So what is the accounts payable turnover? The accounts payable turnover is defined as purchases divided by average accounts payable. 
so this comes out to be 45,000 divided by 15,000 that is equal to 3 so this is your step 1 step 1 is calculate your accounts payables turnover now in order to calculate the days payable outstanding the second step is you need to divide 365 that second step is fairly simple 365 by your accounts payable turnover so that's it 365 divided by your accounts payable turnover and what you get here is 121.667 days okay so it basically accounts uh, days payable outstanding just converts your accounts payable turnover into days so it's easier to intuitively understand what's going on so this here we can easily interpret that okay days payable outstanding of 121.6 days essentially means that the company is paying to its, supp its suppliers every 121 Point six days so uh, sometimes what happens is that interpreting the turnover becomes a bit of an issue so converting it into number of days is easier option to look at so that's that's how you calculate days payable outstanding now having understood this let's look at how the calculation goes when we consider Colgate as an example here is the balance sheet of Colgate and I want you to scroll down to row number 115 this is where we will calculate days payable outstanding or average payable days it's one and the same so uh, the formula for days payable outstanding was divided into two parts first the calculation of accounts payables turnover and second is to divide 365 by accounts payable turnover so in our last video we did calculate accounts payables turnover so as you can see here we already have this uh, accounts payables turnover this was the most uh, difficult part and then the second uh, step was just to divide 365 by the respective accounts payables turnover ratios okay so that's what we just need to do here in row number 115 so let's do that and calculate days payable outstanding this is equal to 365 divided by 5.33 okay so we get 68.5 days okay so the answer here is in number of days because we are talking about average payable days so uh, that's that's one and uh, i want you to uh, you know apps make this as an absolute reference by uh, doing i mean by putting a dollar sign here you can uh, use a shortcut uh, keyboard shortcut that is f4 the reason we are doing this is that when we copy this formula this 365 won't move but uh, the low new denominator will keep on moving as we copy from this row to another row okay so let's do that and what we see here is in terms of trend the uh, average payables days or days payable outstanding have been pretty much in the range of 68.5 to 70 71.4 okay and uh, if you compare this with uh, the industry industry meaning you know we are taking procter and gamble as an as a reference point so procter and gamble has uh, the days payable outstanding as around 120 days so uh, if you compare these two obviously procter and gamble is able to uh, get more credit from its suppliers in terms of days however uh, Colgate is uh, paying its uh, suppliers in a much faster way every 71 days so uh, either uh, Colgate can try and uh, renegotiate with its suppliers regarding their credit policy and uh, maybe they can get some more favorable terms so this will lead to more cash in the system and uh, that's how you know you can interpret average payable days I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. Also, we come up with very interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notifications about our latest video as soon as we release one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.